Hello, uh, hello, Stephen. How are you? All right, Robert. Yourself? Yes. Um, I'm outside. Um, I can only speak briefly today. I thought we could just touch base and maybe speak in more depth. If I go over the things I've been um, looking at, maybe we could talk at more depth yes, at another no. time. If that's all right with you. That's okay with me, Robert. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so, yes. Go on. Go on. I'm just going to say, so you had questions about the resurrection and, and then the, book, the books on, on the page 159, won't it? Those who worship God. They've got six, six points there. Um, well, the, the first point would be the resurrection. Um, uh, your yeah. book doesn't, because I would, my background is in the evangelical church. I didn't. I stopped right. attending ten years ago, but I would believe that Christ rose as the Catholics and the Protestant teach in the same body that he died in. You believe in that? Yes. So I was. I was wondering if you would have an answer because your book doesn't mention passages like Acts seventeen thirty one, for instance, where it refers to Jesus fifteen years after his resurrection as a man. And I was just wondering what your response would be to that. You see. But it's funny you should mention about the resurrection because we've just received a watchtower, you know, our, our magazine that we get. Mm -hmm. And that, that's actually looking in, into the resurrection, the December 2020 issue of the Watchtower magazine. And it, it, it does go into depth on that. Does it mention Acts 1731? Let me just dig it up. Let's have um, I don't really have the time. It's, I, I'm outside and it's extremely cold. I don't have a coat. I can I can touch touch base with you, Stephen. Right. Yes. Um, the so when will you be available? Because uh, I'm away for a, a week and a bit now uh, from tomorrow, Fred. Um, what about Saturday morning? I, I, I'm, I'm a, like I say, I'm away for a few. Oh, you oh, you're right. Well, why don't you text me when you're back? Text me when you're back. Um, I might not be able to respond if I have no credit, so it's best to text me with a time. I'm usually free in the mornings okay. and evenings after 7.30, never in the afternoons. Right, no problem. Um, so, in the evenings after sort of 7.30? Yeah, yeah. Um, I will look at this watchtower. I ha I'm leaving the place where I'm... I have internet access, so I'm leaving that in, in, in a moment. I had to go outside because it's very noisy in, in, inside. Um, yeah. So that's why I'm outside. You can probably hear traffic in the background. It's very cold. Um, um, the first thing would be the resurrection. So Acts 17.31 talks about Christ. Paul refers to Christ 15 years after his resurrection as the man who he has ra been raised from the dead, the antecedent to raised him from the dead is the word man and also it talks about the judgment which will be after Armageddon and it says that uh, God is going to judge the world by a man so that's Christ is yes. referred to as a man in that verse so so that's that's the first thing right yes um, the second thing would be your book what can the Bible teach us it says on page 33 quote all governments belong to Satan that's at the end of paragraph 11 yes um, right. Would you believe the British government and the British Crown, which is the head of the British government, it belongs to well, Satan? If, if you look at uh, the scripture there in, in uh, First John yeah, five yeah, nineteen, yeah. it talks about yeah. the old world being the power of the wicked one, which we, we take as Satan, the devil. So, if the world, as in the but, not the physical world, but Okay, so the, the, the whole world in 1 John 5, 19, what does that refer to? It, it refers to the world of mankind, not, not the physical world, but the, the, the world of mankind. It doesn't say the world of mankind, does it, though? It, it says, it says no, the whole no. world. Yes. You, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a simple contrast between verse 18 um, John uses the first person plural. I don't have the Bible here in front of me, but um, he used the first person plural we know at the start of verse 18 and verse 19. It's a simple contrast between those who've been born of God. Obviously, governments can't be born of God. John didn't write his epistle to the 
government in Gaul or the government in Egypt so the government could be born of God. It's written to individual Christian believers. It's called an epistle, as you know. Um, yes. And it's a contrast in verse 18 and the start of verse 19 between individuals who have been born of God and individuals who haven't been born of God. So the whole world simply refers to people who haven't been born of God. It doesn't refer to okay. every single person on earth and it doesn't refer to governments. There's, there's no reference to governments in First John, unless you can show it to me. Um, and what about the temptation of Satan um, Jesus in Matthew? Yeah, um, it is very cold. I'm outside. If we could just touch base, we could maybe discuss these things at another time, if that's, that's possible. Um, the third that's thing... Problem, thanks. The third thing would be page 159 of your book, What Can the Bible Teach Us? Um, perhaps I could just say Matthew 4 and Luke 4 are before Christ's death, burial and resurrection, so I don't think they're relevant for today at all. And also you need to determine what is Satan offering Jesus? Um, in in Ma Matthew 4, does Satan own every square inch of this earth? Does he own Old Trafford Football Stadium, Wembley F Football Stadium, uh, the Houses of Parliament? Um, the Empire State Building, the whole of Canada, Australia, New Zealand, India, Russia. Does, does Satan own every square inch of this earth? Because the Bible says that the earth is Jehovah's in Psalm 24, 1 and other verses. So you have a flat out contradiction. Who owns this earth, this physical earth? Is it Jehovah or is it Satan or do they co-own it together? So I think unless you define your terms, it's really pointless just to sort of trade Bible verses like punches. Yes, yeah. um, The obvious answer is that Satan's kingdom is a spiritual kingdom of people who reject God and people who are in rebellion to God. That's Satan's kingdom. That's all that Satan is offering to Jesus in Matthew 4 and Luke 4. Besides which, even if I'm wrong, Satan's power was broken by Christ's death, burial and resurrection. Colossians 2, 14 and 15. So... Um, you know, e even if Satan did own this physical earth in Matthew 4, he would have lost it at Christ's death, burial and resurrection according to Colossians 2, 14 and 15 because Satan's a defeated foe. Jesus was the victor when Jesus rose from the dead. Satan was defeated. Um, That's true. Yeah, so, yeah. And, and the third point would be page 159 of What Can the Bible Teach Us? Um, the fifth point is the only one I'm interested in. Uh, it says, don't get involved in politics. Yes. Um, but of course, the Jehovah's Witnesses have got involved in politics and warfare. You were members of the United Nations for nine years, from 1992 to 2001. So if you're not supposed to get in politics, involved with politics, why were you members of the United Nations? Um, I found a watchtower from 1947, the 1st of June, which talks about... Uh, in Australia in the Second World War, Jehovah's Witnesses working in machine shops producing instruments of war. That's in the Watchtower, admitting that that's what Jehovah's Witnesses in Australia were doing. They were supporting the American right. military in Australia, not worldwide, just in Australia. And also um, the Watchtower for May, I think it's the 15th of May 1918, Rutherford to stop him going to prison, because I've read a lot about your history, I found it very interesting. But Rutherford um, produced a, a Watchtower article, Zion's Watchtower as it was then called, promoting the purchase of Liberty Bonds or Liberty Loans to support the American military in the, in the First World War. That's in America. Right. Right. So the 1918 yes. Watchtower is, is an American context, the 1947 Watchtower is an Australian context, but you know, you're involved with the military in both wars. So I would just have problems with that really. Yes, fair enough, yes, yes. Well, yeah. it's like anything, you know, we get clarification and uh, mm -hmm. we, we adjust it accordingly, yes. Okay, I'm very sorry about this, that it's so brief, but I'm absolutely freezing out cold, I'm, I'm shivering. If if I went inside, you, you, would, you would hear all this shouting and music and so on, so that's that's why I'm outside. <laughs> but um, no, 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 no. Well, when you're back, little, yeah, when you're yeah. back, just text me a time, um, early mornings between 9 and 11 or evenings after 7.30 it's best to, to text me a time just don't try and negotiate just send me a time when you're calling if I have credit I'll try and say yes okay but I might not have credit 
so I might not be able to reply. Yeah, so uh, more than anything, it will probably be a week on Monday if that's okay with yourself. Yeah, that's absolutely fine, Stephen. So I'll, I'll make a note of that. that I'll, I'll text you next weekend. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll sort some out there. Yeah, th th thank you very much. Okay, no, and no it's problems. it's Keithley. I thought it was K E I T H. It's K E. How do you spell it? K E I G H. K E I G H. Ah, right. Okay, thank you. L E Y. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's different. <laughs> okay then. Well, thank you very much for phoning, Stephen. Okay. Take care. Of yourself. Take, take care. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.